Hey guys, what's up? Um, in this video, I want to talk about how can you build an online booking system and uh, not just the actual act of building an online booking system, but the most important feature, which is prevent double booking or prevent race condition when two people try to book the same seat at the same exact millisecond okay a lot i've seen a lot of systems that actually don't have this problem solved right so i'm gonna talk about it i'm gonna talk about how to prevent race condition i'm gonna talk about exclusive locks right and i'm not gonna show you how i build this application because it's very straightforward uh not really magic i might i might make another video to actually show you how the how I built the application from scratch. It's 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 really straightforward. I'm using Express Node.js and Postgres as the backend. I'm gonna go through the application right now. The idea here is we are building an online system that books, I don't know, seats, right? You're you're buying tickets at a concert. And uh, this is one user, and this is just another instance, maybe another user, right? And trying to open that. And these are seats. Seats are green, that means they are available red are booked okay how about we actually try to implement this thing so if i click on this seat number three and i say hey my name is ali and i want to book this seat i'm going to give back a message say hey this was booked successfully right and we're going to go through the logic and what what exactly am i doing here and if i do this and i'm refresh here I can see that this now is booked by Ali. You can see there is a tool tip here. I didn't, I really, I, it's a bad front end, I know. <laughs> it's just, it just does the trick. And if I go to the other user and refresh, you can see that this has taken effect, all right? So of that user, let's like say book number, uh, uh, Jack booked number nine, and you can see that I am now actually debugging this and I'm gonna show you exactly what happened. So how about we go through the code? I'm I made a put request here and what we're doing here is we get the ID, which is the seat ID and the name from the prompt and I am connecting through a Postgres pool. So I'm gonna pick up one client from the pool and we talked about Node.js, uh, Postgres and how we actually uh, make transactions. I'm gonna reference the videos here if you want details this. I'm gonna go quickly through them. I'm going to begin a transaction because obviously this is a transaction, right? And the first thing I'm going to do in the transaction is this. I'm going to select star from seats. I need to actually query the seat and see if it's actually booked or not. That makes sense, right? A lot of booking system actually does that. And so where ID is equal one and is booked equal zero, that means it's not, it's not booked. And that's perfect. When I do this query, I'm going to get result back and the row count is one. That means, hey, you actually found the seat and it's available for you. All right, so far, so good. But if that seat is not available, you're going to get an error. We're going to send back an error seat already booked. This is to avoid this double booking, but we're going to show that this is not enough uh, in a minute, right? A lot of people actually do this this part, the query and check that thing, but this is not enough. So I'm going to go, and once we actually pass this debt, we are safe to actually execute an update statement and set the, go away please, <laughs> is, is booked equal one and the name equal then where ID equal one. We just physically set that statement. Sweet, let's go ahead and just run this thing and we commit the transaction. We release the client back to the pool, right? And then we send the result. So we get back, we get back also here, booked successfully, right? And then if I refresh here, right? And I'm not gonna refresh actually. If I actually click this nine now, and I'm gonna book it for, which is already booked, we know that it's booked, right? If I say, I don't know, Hussein, say okay, we get an error, failed, couldn't book, because it's already booked. And the reason is because we have queried and that query actually failed, returned no record and got an error. All right, Hussein, what are you doing? The, all of the stuff we know. Here is the flaw of this design. The problem with this design is double booking can easily happen, not on my single machine obviously but if you have a flux of requests coming at the same time 
you will get into a situation where both statements actually at the same time, you can imagine them executing in parallel. They query, the seat is available, right? The, the first transaction query and says, oh, the seat is available and it reaches here. And the second query also queries and also finds out that the seat, the same seat is also available, right? So both of them will succeed on this if statement. They will pass it and both of them will execute the update. And that's the problem in this case, last win in. But incorrectly, the client will get the message that actually your booking has been succeeded. And we saw a lot of, uh, back, back maybe 10 years ago when, uh, online cinema became a thing, right? We always get double booking because of this problem, because it's a popular system, right? A lot of people query at the same time. So we're gonna show how to fix that. First of all, let's reproduce this. Let's show you actually this is gonna happen, but I'm gonna do this with the power of debugging. <laughs> so here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to book, uh, I'm going to book uh, seat number 15 now. And I am going to assign him to Rec, all right? And this will essentially go to the debugging statement, passes all of that stuff, and I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to intentionally not resume the code to go to continue. But guess what? It actually passed the select statement uh, that actually checks whether, whether the row seat exists or not. So the seat is available. Here's what we're gonna do. The seat is available, but that guy didn't update it yet. Rick did not actually reserve the seat because he didn't reach the statement, right? Now, if I go to the other client and I also try to book this guy and I say, Edmond, want to book this guy this i don't have a debugger this guy will completely succeed because there, there's no debugging right it will query find out this is available and it will actually commit the transaction oh this is booked now here's what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna just release the code go ahead and continue and you can see that both of them actually book the same seat and that's the problem this is what is called race condition in online system or double booking and here is how we can fix this problem guys using the concept of exclusive locks how about we jump into it and fix it the problem here guys is both of these guys are attempting to edit the same row technically right so the solution one solution at least is the first person or process to get to the row should obtain an exclusive lock on that row so that the other process when it tries to execute it it will have to wait until the other transaction actually completed and how do we do this in postgres it is very simple the same thing you select you're, you're selecting this row right the only thing you need to do is add two things at the end. So for update, that's it. When you do select star from select where ID and you query the role, you also say for update and that is called a row level lock and few databases actually support that, not all databases, right? So this is a very, very important feature in some databases. Postgres support, I think MySQL also support it. Oracle definitely support it. And you do it for update. And, and the syntax SQL 92 is almost identical in all of them. So you do select star for update. Wow. All right. The moment you do that, the database will obtain an exclusive lock on that row. That means if someone tries to update that row or select it for update as well, they will have to wait. And this is what I don't like about Postgres, right? In Oracle, because I use Oracle for 15 years, and in Oracle, that's why Oracle is expensive, one of the reasons, is in Oracle, you can actually specify a timeout here. It says, hey, wait for five seconds, right? Here, it's actually an indefinite wait. I'm going to show that now in a minute, All right? So let's go ahead and try to, now that we have fixed that, let's refresh this thing, and let's also rerun our my second application right which is a1 port 8888 
and let's check this out, right? And for fun, let's just clear all that books, right? I'm gonna update CT equal book. <laughs> Boof, what a DBA I am, huh? There's no, <laughs> no one is booking anything, just like that. All right, everything is now unbooked. Sweet, guys. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna book seat 15. I'm gonna, uh, Edmond, for example, booking seat 15. We go there, hopefully the debugger anytime soon. Now, okay, we selected the same stadium, but now it's for update. There is a little bit of difference in the database. It's freaking out now, right? We got it now. Here's the thing. This guy will always be the winner, no matter what. I'm gonna find out how. So the other process now will try to book 15. Was it 15? I think it's 15. Let's just make sure. I think it's 15. Yep, 15. All right. So 15, if I click 15 and I say, uh, Melissa want to book 15, here's what we're gonna do. Look at that. We didn't receive anything. It's just waiting. Now the process is just stuck. Right, and this is what I don't like about policy. There is no option. I'm, I might be wrong, guys. Or correct me if I'm wrong. There is no option to actually give up and time out after uh, after a um, certain amount of waiting. Right. So this guy is waiting, and this is a bad user experience. That's the limitation of this now, and this is where your database actually shines. Now, if I go and say, release the kraken here, go back. This guy. This is what happened. Look, ooh, something happened here, right? Book successfully is the guy who actually, the person who actually made the transaction, book successfully. But this guy was waiting technically right here. They were stuck. And the moment this process actually released the transaction, what happened is that lock got unblocked and now we selected the brand new committed change which was uh, what it was actually committed which was the rate is already booked that means this result is zero that means the seat is already booked all right and that's what happened essentially guys so this is now a bulletproof uh online booking system that is essentially race safe or or you cannot get double booking with them obviously comes with a price but that price, remember, nobody in, in their right mind will put a debugger, obviously. And this will take a finite amount of time, milliseconds. It's very fast. So the wait will almost be unnoticeable, right? So that's what again. Couldn't, couldn't book, already booked, all right? All right, guys, that was a short video uh, talking about this. Let me know, guys, if you actually want me to build this application from scratch, showing you how to how I do it. All these pieces, we explained all that stuff before. Everything, right? The get request, this is a put. Also, for fun, I added a delete, but I remove it, right? To delete that booking, to unbook that thing. And obviously, this is very simple. I'm gonna reference the source code below for you guys, if you're interested. And the database also, it's just, it's just a Postgres on Docker. Very straightforward. And um, all the tutorials, all this Postgres tutorials, we have done them before. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if I missed anything. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.